Michelle Tiberge, and I'm super excited today because we're gonna try art resin. Um, this is no VOC, it's a non-toxic product. Um, let's see, does it have the ASTM non-toxic? Anyway, it's low VOCs or no VOCs. So that is really important to me. You may have heard in my other videos talk about um, my using pouring medium as a non-toxic resin coat. Um, it has some strengths and it has some weaknesses in that regard. So I'm gonna compare the two and then also talk about my early experiments with um, resin, which is this other brand. And I'm gonna sort of compare these different experiences. So first, what I wanna do, we're gonna get the angle on this so you can see the vulnerability of a pouring medium. I get asked a lot, is that tilted okay? Is that good where they can see it? There you go. Okay. So what you see here is this, unfortunately, it went to a show and came back damaged. There's that little divot there and then something got pressed against it. Um, even though I put it in the box, please do not touch the surface of the painting. I don't know what happened. These are acrylics in general. They're not super hard like a resin would be when it's dry. So, um, so that is a big drawback of it, okay? So um, because acrylic surfaces aren't very hard, they are vulnerable, and that's why it's important to varnish. And you can watch my video on varnishing. So that's really important, and it will create a less permeable surface and also a less uh, soft surface, but that's just the nature of acrylics. They are somewhat soft. Oil paints are somewhat brittle when they dry. All paints have some kind of um, vulnerability, I would say. So, um, so I'm looking for getting this buildup of clear layers so that I can do other things in between. And one thing I wanted to show you though that I won't be able to get necessarily with art resin is this final coat of acrylic because they recommend on the website is that if you do layers of acrylic in between, you can paint acrylic in between, that you do the final coat of the art resin and I really like this change in sheen this little shape here is created by a matte sheen and then the rest of it has the pouring medium now obviously this doesn't have a varnish on it one thing I could do is varnish out here with gloss I could mask this do a gloss spray so that I wouldn't get brush strokes or anything and then pull the mask off and then um, wait yeah, pull this mask off and then mask this and then do a matte spray. And then I would retain that difference. The positive of the pouring medium is that you can go back and forth. You can do all kinds of layers. You don't have to do a final coat that's purely glossy like you would with art resin. All right, so I'm gonna show you my failed early attempt at resin. This is this brand here. Um, I bought this at the art supply store I had a really nice um, salesperson who explained how to do it, and it's called Envirotex Light, and so it kind of gives you this idea that it's a non-toxic product, but then you can actually read the big, huge danger label. Contains epoxy resin and polyamine hardener that may be harmful if misused. Keep out of reach of children and this stuff. So I don't really... I didn't find anything on here that said anything about this being less toxic than other types of resin. I certainly used my full respirator when I put this on, did it at the end of the day, closed the door, came back in the morning. It actually didn't smell at all in here, which I was surprised, but I didn't do, do a huge amount. But my surface, he, they, one of the things in here, they said stir it really, really thoroughly. Well, I stirred it really, really thoroughly and I got so many bubbles and, um, they said that they would just evaporate out, but they didn't. And then I got this weird little divot situation happening here. I'm not really sure how that happened. Um, I did end up buying a torch later, propane torch, but I didn't do more of this, so I never ended up learning how to do that. And so that's why I'm calling this video Art Resin for Dummies, because <laughs> I'm gonna just show you what it's like for a beginner with no experience doing this and we'll find out how easy or hard it is. Probably like any other material, it takes some experience and practice to get good at it, but we'll see how well I do with no experience. Um, 
anyway, so, and the other thing too, that the guy told me at the art supply store, he said, yeah, you probably want to like pour it on cardboard. So, um, it doesn't, you know, stick to the floor or the table. Well, then it just stuck to the cardboard and this will never come off. This stuff basically just is completely glued on there permanently. So this is sort of a trash painting, just practice. Okay. So we have two things we're going to pour on. We're going to pour on this canvas that I painted on with ink and I've set it up on this cup so that the pouring, I mean the, sorry, the art resin will drip over the sides and it won't stick to the cup um, and I'll just be able to lift it off when it's dry. And then we've got this over here. This is a pouring medium painting. And so Joanne, who's here helping me today, asked me specifically if I would um, do it over some pouring medium. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it over pouring medium. I wanted to show you difference in hardness between a resin and the pouring medium. So I'm going to put um, my fingernail in there and you see it makes that little mark there. Got that? Okay. So over here I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> My fingernail just slides right off. This stuff is really hard. It's it's what you'd almost call bulletproof. So I cannot scratch that. I can it's really hard. So that is an advantage of the resin. It makes a really hard sealed surface. It's very protected. And um, if you watch um, Dave on the art resin website, he actually shows you how to clean them with Windex, which is hilarious. You don't clean your fine art paintings with Windex, but if you've got resin on there, you can go ahead and use Windex to clean your paintings. Okay. So Joanne is going to mix the art resin. So we have our materials here. We have some nitrile gloves, which are better than latex for protecting your skin from chemicals. Um, then we have a palette knife because we don't have a scraper. So we're gonna use that for mixing and scraping or spreading it. Then we're going to use the little marker to mark on the bottle how much medium, I mean, how much resin and hardener to use and then we have the bottle of can you hold up part a that's the um the resin okay and then part b we're mixing these two parts together that's the hardener okay and then we have a little container to mix it in all right we did do some research um these are no vocs what is a voc that is um a volatile organic compound, those are compounds that evaporate into the air at um, a high rate. So you end up smelling a lot. Now this doesn't put a little line there. You can use a measuring cup, but we don't have one. So we're just going to put a line. We will pour out that much into our cup. We're not doing it on the cup because the cup um, is graduated in size. And so if it would be different, it would be hard to measure seen that okay so this stuff is really thick and it's beautiful super clear what do you think Joanne it's uh I do like how thick it is it's almost like honey right mm -hmm. is that kind of the consistency a little runnier than honey Okay, so um, which part are you have putting this is in there? This part A. The That's the resin. resin. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I like need a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. I like how she's twirling the bottle, like when you pour wine, so it doesn't drip. <laughs> I'm very fancy. <laughs> Looks about. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. She's being very precise. That's important, actually. You really want to get equal amounts of these parts because it is chemistry, and um, in order for it to harden correctly, we want the right amount. The tricky thing is, as it as I pour it, it gets stuck to the sides, and then it settles uh, back down. Maybe and it keeps pour some of the out. other one and let that settle. Ooh, smart. And then, um, okay, so now we've got some of the hardener in here. And there is a slight smell to it, but it's really okay. not. I can't smell it from where I am and very chemically sensitive. Um, 
So all, all kinds of things, you know, bother me. And this bothers me less than nail polish removers. So okay. Really not so bad. The nail polish remover in my book is pretty bad. <laughs> So people use this for all kinds of uses, I mean, for jewelry, for covering photos. It is uh, one of the things I didn't mention earlier is it's much more costly than pouring medium, but I believe that you will be able to get a much thicker coat at a time. Whereas a pouring medium, we end up wasting a lot because it runs off the edge and it's much thinner. Um, I'll let that sit for a second. And okay. Go back to this guy. All right. So maybe a measuring cup, measuring is worth cup would be smart. The investment. I have, if I'd known, I would have gone to the thrift store or the dollar store to buy one. But again, we're beginners. <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> so we're ready to start stirring up the equal parts of the hardener and the resin. I know you have to mix it really thoroughly. What else do you remember, Joanne, about what they said on the website? They suggested for at least three minutes and scraping the sides and the bottom. Oh, okay. Because if you don't, you might get some parts that aren't mixed well. Got it. And then you end up with resin that doesn't set. Okay. It ends up like Let's gummy or something. Side too. So it's getting a little like cloudier mm -hmm. as you mix it. And are there bubbles happening? There now? are. Okay. I know bubbles are an issue in resin, and, and you want something that you can get rid of the bubbles. And that's why people use the propane torch, which I don't have. I ended up selling the propane torch because I gave up on resin. But um, We could try that hair dryer. Yeah, maybe we will for this. They also said that um, a heat gun, right, mm -hmm. would work for getting rid of bubbles or your breath just blowing on them but I guess it's not like with acrylic pouring medium if you had a bubble I would just take a little pin and pop it but I don't think that's how you do it with resin you have to use heat there were a couple like outside videos not by art resin that I watched mm -hmm. where people went through with like a stick and oh they did mm -hmm. and it worked got rid of them yeah but it took a while so if you only have you limited have go, working time yeah yeah right and that's the thing right so pouring medium um, takes a very long time to cure, as you may know if you've watched my videos. Um, the unfolding of the painting series is a lot about pouring medium not curing very <laughs> fast. <laughs> All right, so we're very excited we get to pour now. Um, what Joanne noticed is this made a lot of bubbles. It's very kind of cloudy. Um, we didn't expect that, but again, this is our first time, so maybe... There's something we don't know about this, but um, she did stir it the prescribed amount of time. And I think the mixing it thoroughly is really important. And um, there are ways to get rid of bubbles like the heat gun, um, propane torch or whatever. I noticed um, Rebecca was using like, a, it was almost like a little culinary torch because I bought one at a hard. Um, so I guess you spread it. This is what's different for me because I'm used to pouring medium sort of levels and falls down. <laughs> so I'm sort of frosting a cake. Um, and so those of you who are resin experienced can give us a little critique or leave feedback on ways to do this. Oops. <laughs> Okay, I feel like I've gotten it everywhere. Um, we'll let that one sit for a second and then we'll pour on this one. I don't know if I should just go for it and put it all on here. Yeah, I'm so used to doing pouring medium and letting it just kind of spread out, but I know you're supposed to spread it I'm using a palette knife because these are small, but um, I'd probably want to get some kind of a scraper thing uh, that's a little bigger tool if I was doing this on larger pieces. All right. I'm not sure how thick it's supposed to be. I didn't see anything. Did you? Do you know anything about a thickness level? 
Um, so yeah, I am just kind of frosting the cake. <laughs> And it might start running over. I know um, there's a video on the Art Resin website um, where Dave shows, like, kind of running your hand along the side, but it's not spreading over here yet, so. There are some. There's some drips here. Inside. There are some. Okay, so I'll do that little thing. He just, oh, but I have tape on this one, so that's not going to work. It's a pretty blue. But I won't be able to take the tape off. I'm going to just leave that one in hopes just to see if I'd be able to take the tape off. I'm trying it. There's just a few drips on this side. This one, are there any drips? No. Um, I hope I got enough. Okay, we have like 10 million or 10 billion bubbles. What do you say, Joanne? 10 billion is good. 10 billion. Okay. <laughs> so um, I don't know if those bubbles are going to go away. I'm going to start blowing on it. I don't know if blowing is just for the big bubbles. Because they said that would work, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's getting a little clearer there, isn't it? Oh my God, whoa. You can, see you can check it. Oh, it's fun. It's sort of like watching like champagne or something in a glass, like little teeny tiny bubbles. They are disappearing on their very own. Is it because I blew on it? It does seem to be focused in that area. That's crazy. Okay, I'm gonna blow, let me blow on this one as a test, okay. He said not to do a hair dryer, so we're doing, he said a breath, breath is okay. It may be there's some moisture in the breath that contributes to, it's really magical. I don't know if you, can you get it on the camera? It's like little tiny bubbles bursting everywhere. All right, should we? Okay, this one looks like it's getting pretty clear. Yeah. That one looks, except this corner. Oh, I'm gonna blow on that corner. Oh shoot, darn it. It did something weird, did you see what happened? Mm -hmm. It kind of moved, but it's, it seems to be resolving itself. I'm really happy about this. It's looking great, don't you think? It looks pretty clear, pretty yes. smooth. And I think this is going to resolve. There's like a little arc here of bubbles. Wow, it looks great. There's one large bubble. Right, right there. there. Okay, I'll blow on that one. Ooh, Ooh, gone. Wow, it looks very perfect. Okay, let's check this one out. Wow, okay. So this, I would say, is much easier than that other type of resin I used. Um, so already I'm liking it a lot better. Um, so we'll check back in when they're dry. Okay, so what we're noticing is there are a lot of bubbles in this still. Um, little teeny tiny, tiny, tiny bubbles. So I don't know what's going to happen, if it's going to clarify as it dries. This one over here, it seems like it has less, but Joanne thinks that might be because there's more light in the canvas I mean are you saying like the texture of the canvas might be making it hard to see those bubbles yeah well the light teal color versus if we go to the darker area here yeah it looks like you can see more bubbles oh I see sure but over the light areas it's all right I'm gonna see. try blowing again see if anything happens Let's see. Um, whoa, yes, something's happening. Check that out. It's so cool. I love this process. All right, I'm gonna just bust out the hair dryer just to see what happens because we're just practicing and these aren't real paintings. I don't care what happens. It's just to learn about the material. Okay, I have a 250 volt option. I'm gonna put it, it on the higher. Like it might have created some crescents of bubbles in there. Okay, what do you think? Is that helping? 
I think it is. This looks way clearer now. Yep. You do have those streaks of bubbles in there, but it does look majority clearer. So maybe I'd need to do more of it. I'm wondering if the blow dryer, the reason why the blow dryer is not suggested is because it moves it more than a heat gun would. There's a lot of air uh, movement to heat. Yeah, maybe that's it. And so it's creating those little Okay, lines. but but it does um, vouch for using a heat gun that you would have good results. I'm, since this is just samples and practice, I don't care if this messes it up. I just want to see what happens. Let's see, that's warm. Okay, I had a warm setting and a hot setting. I'm gonna try warm. Let's see if that does it without blowing the material away too much. Do what Dave shows in one of his videos is when the stuff the drips are smearing down the side is that you use your hand to kind of with a glove obviously to smooth it over but that's just going to give you a really glossy look on the side and if I'm working on wood panels I don't want I don't want a gloss and I don't want anything on it I'd like I'd, I'd probably like to just have the raw wood I'll have to experiment with that but anyway this is a way to deal with the drips he just smooths it and he said you have to come back I think after 10 minutes um, I'll, I'll try and link his video here too just so you can see you know he's much more skilled and experienced at this than I am this is my first time so <laughs> you can watch an expert do it okay so I would say that when I put the hair dryer on there I could definitely smell it off gassing a little bit um, there's a, there's definitely an odor to it um, that's somehow released by the heat. So it's not really bad. I'm pretty sensitive and really avoid all kinds of chemicals. I don't paint with oil paint anymore. Um, so I'm just mentioning this in case there's people who are really environmentally sensitive that, that you would know that there's a little bit of an odor and just to be safe about that. But it's not, I'm standing over here, I don't really smell it. Sometimes when I'm doing a lot of pouring, there's a lot of pouring medium, I can smell it in the studio. So um, so it's not too bad. I'm pretty excited about it, I'm really happy. I'm really excited about this and um, I think I'll try and use it some more. Wanted to show you in close up that all the bubbles that were visible, that we were dealing with when we were pouring it are completely gone. So it did come to a really perfect finish. I'm seeing something in the camera that's not showing up to the naked eye. There's, like, that's interesting. It feels very smooth, but something, um, I don't know, no, it's pretty crystal clear and smooth. Both of them, no bubbles. So this is how they turned out. Um, they've been dry for quite a while now and super hard you're gonna love that um here's how the edges turned out that i wiped down with a glove so you can see that they're glossy but it's not too noticeable um i tried removing the tape it's a little tricky in some spots so definitely not as easy as removing the tape on the pouring medium um, but possible. I think with a knife and maybe some kind of scraping tool or something I could work on that more. So overall I'm really pleased with it. It might not work entirely for all of my purposes because I do paint between all the layers. So I'm going to do some tests on that and if I find anything out I will report it in my next video.